Why did China build a copy of Washington, D.C. in the Gobi Desert? We have been thinking about this one for some time. In 2011, Google Earth users noticed that China had been constructing a series of massive buildings in the Gobi Desert. These bizarre structures included a series of concentric circles with jets parked in the center, a tangle of white intersecting lines, and a grid of 18 miles long. Burned out vehicles orange blocks the size of shipping containers, and structures resembling airports or nuclear plant cooling towers were also visible. The structures are on the border of Gansu and Xinjiang provinces, geographically quite close to the center of the Chinese space program at Zhukian and the Ding Xian military airbase, where top-secret aircraft are tested. It's also only 400 miles from the Lopner Salt Lakes where China performed nuclear tests between 1967 and 1995. Some conspiracy theorists claimed that mysterious tangle of lines are a match for the street layout of Washington, D.C., and these structures are part of war games for a Chinese invasion of the United States. Others suggest the structures were weapons testing sites or messages to aliens. Experts have a more prosaic explanation, the weird grids are merely calibration targets for spy satellites and the structures are likely to be instruments for weather tracking and high-altitude atmospheric research. With the renewed relationship between China and the Russia Empire. I wonder what China's motives behind this. Joint exercises with Russia began on August 21, 2015, labeled as the Sea Cooperation Exercise. Russia was in charge of the operation that was held in the Sea of Japan just off the coast of Vladivostok, Russia. The Chinese sent five aircraft, six helicopters, and approximately 500 soldiers to participate in the exercises. The exercises lasted until August 28 and were the longest cooperative military exercises between China and Russia to date. The basic objective was to foster coordination and partnership in landing operations and seagoing slash naval defenses. In this exercise, five Chinese fighter planes were permitted to cross the Russian border for the first time. Truly this represents a tremendous change between two countries that were in an undeclared state of war for more than half a century. The frightening thing is this silent objective lodged within the exercises. The People's Daily said the Chinese-Russian exercises are mostly pointed toward organization and tactics of military maneuvers in landing operations. Landing operations If the Chinese are not preparing for an invasion of the west coast of the United States as, or during the, kickoff to World World III hostilities, then every military analyst and observer must be wrong. Superficially it can be to prepare China for the Senkaku Island campaign, which is definitely in the works versus Japan. The scale and complexity of the maneuvers, however, lends to reason that a much bigger target must be in China's sights. We are already aware of Russia's aggressive stance and unwillingness to back down even with the potential of a conflict with NATO and other allied Western powers. These exercises are much more than merely force projection, a term basically to connotation that one side is brandishing its claws and bearing its fangs to the other side in a show of capabilities. These exercises are to develop key command and control networks with Chinese allies for both potential small-scale, Senkaku, Syria, for example, joint operations, as well as long-term plans to eventually invade and conquer a larger nation, such as the United States. The operations between China and Russia were the first of their kind with a concentrated focus on both the Sea of Japan and the Mediterranean, focusing on readiness to protect naval straits in close proximity to and far away from the borders of the two countries. The Chinese just plopped down a carrier outside of Syria in which its fighter aircraft will be supporting Russia in the Great War against ISIL or ISIS that apparently has commenced. The Chinese have been developing land-to-ship and ship-to-ship -ship cruise missiles that can effectively outrun all of the U.S. naval defense system's capabilities. The missile is a carrier destroyer that can render an entire naval fleet or carrier group inoperable with a small nuclear warhead, one-fourth megaton or even smaller. 
the Chinese have been upgrading their submarine fleet's capabilities in terms of stealth technology, weapons technology, weapons capacity, and range. The Chinese, for years, now, have been escalating their cyber attacks, their data theft of military and defense information, most of it classified, and their probes of various facets of critical U.S. infrastructure. To see how this came about, an excellent read is The Year of the Rat characterizing the years of the Clinton administration and how its namesake and cronies enabled the selling of classified defense secrets to Chinese operatives. The Chinese are ever-growing, ever-expanding, and constantly striving to overtake the U.S. in all areas. As we watch daily, we can see their slow but steady forward progress in successful undertakings toward their goals. At this rate, it will not be long until those goals are realized. The only question is when will they take military action against us? Will it be with economic collapse or will it be swift and sudden in the form of ICBMs? One thing is for certain, when World World 3 kicks off, the Chinese will play a major role, and not on the side of the United States. Stay paranoid my friends.